we need to talk about this walleye cheating situation in an update. So before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you're new and you're subbing for the first time, send me a comment so I can say hello and welcome you to the team. So if you're in the industry and you have not heard about the walleye anglers who cheated in that loot tournament up in Ohio about a month ago, I don't know where you've been. But in the last month, month and you know, month and a few weeks, I have been asked more about these walleye anglers than anything I've ever done. More than the radio show, more than the YouTube channel, more than anything. If I go to a swimming tournament for Thomas and somebody knows I love fishing, I'm instantly asked about what my my thoughts are on this walleye angler cheater, these walleye anglers who cheated. Everybody who knows that I love fishing comes up to me and asks me about it. Still to this day, it's Halloween. It's the 31st and people are still asking me this morning what my thoughts are on it. So I thought I'd give an update. So we know their boat has been confiscated and so is their tackle and other things. They have been indicted by a grand jury for cheating and more. There's actually three felony counts on them. The charges include grand theft, cheating, fraud. And here's the crazy thing. They pleaded not guilty. We got weights and fish! There we go! I don't want to sound arrogant or cocky, but I am confident that we should do well in this championship also because it's just what we do. We got weights and fish! How the hell is that? We saw the weights come out of the fish in the belly. Did they just happen to miraculously eat 12 ounce bullet weights? How they can plead not guilty is absurd. It's absurd. I think the biggest, the second biggest takeaway from this cheating scandal was the poor Jason Fisher who was the tournament director. We need to buy him a sharper knife because he couldn't cut into those fish with three, three slashes. We need to take up a GoFundMe to buy some some n proper knives for Jason. That's what I think we need to do. It's a joke, of course. Now, they are on three felony charges, and the felony charges include cheating, grand theft, fraud, and they pleaded not guilty, which is crazy, and they bonded, bonded out. The bond was $2,500. We know last year they made $300,000 in tournament winnings. We, knew, we know that they supposedly made $250,000 in sponsorship money, which is kind of makes sense. When you win Angler of the Year and you win all these tournaments, the money starts to, to come in. When you don't do well, it's harder to get tournament money, get sponsorship money. Some of the sponsors said that they weren't paid, but you don't put on all these logos all over your jersey if you're not being paid for it. It doesn't make sense. Now, some of the stuff might be promotional stuff where they get something for free but they were making tournament they were getting sponsorship money it makes sense you have to have sponsorship money to get into most of these tournaments or to be profitable and they said themselves they want they had two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in sponsorship money but what we need to talk about is if they're indicted and they're they're found guilty they can get up to one year in prison and twenty five hundred dollar in fine and then some other little fines is a year in prison and $2,500 enough to make a point that this cannot happen in any tournaments? The truth be told, a lot of people will say it. If you're not close to cheating, you're not competing. That's a phrase people have said for years in NASCAR, in swimming, in basketball, in football. I mean, we even have uh, football teams that, that look and, and have done stuff to film other teams or the Astros stealing signs when they're on second base. We didn't even get that much. There wasn't an indictment for those people, but here in fish in the angling world, it is because people are pissed off. This has been four or five or six weeks of one of the most searched topics on YouTube. But we need to make a point that this is what happens if you're going to break the rules and if you're going to cheat. And it isn't just in this walleye tournament. It happens in Major League Fishing. No offense, it happens in the Elite. 
It happens in all fishing tournaments. When there's money on the line to win, people are going to do the bad things to win that to win that money. And it's a shame that that's how it works because you're paying to play in those sports where in other sports you get paid to show up. These guys have lost their boats, they've lost their tools, they've lost their knives, they've lost everything. They're being indicted. One year in jail to me is is a lot. But $2,500 is not. These two guys thought about doing what they did. They thought about, they put effort into making sure that they did things so that if you felt them, that maybe you would feel the flesh of another walleye. That's why they put those other fish in their, in their uh, stomachs. But these guys had a game plan to do this. But uh, I expect to win. They pled not guilty which is the real crappy thing about this. You got caught with your hands in the cookie jar, boys. That weights and fit! There we go! Oh, yeah. 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 Get out of here! Plead guilty and just get this over with. Let's brush this out. Let's make sure they can never fish another tournament anywhere. Because right now they can only not fish tournaments in Ohio. I believe they shouldn't be able to fish tournaments anywhere. You cheat here, you can't fish down in Florida. You can't fish in California. You can no longer fish a tournament. I'd like to hear what you want. You think. Is a year in prison and $2,500 fine, is that enough? Is that enough? Where do we go to make this the benchmark for what will happen from here on out? Because if it happens here, or even it's a little thing that happens in Major League Fishing, or in Bass Elites, or NPFL, or wherever it's done, we need to have a game plan of what these anglers should have to do. Or what the benchmark should be. Uh, we, we have to do something. It needs to be said. Uh, I give, uh, again, I give my hats off to the, the tournament director, Jason Fisher, for figuring it out and telling those guys to hold on and wait. But at the same time, I, I still do hold the tournament director a little bit accountable for this. I think that if uh, I think that if you fail one polygraph, you shouldn't be allowed to fish in the tournament. That's just my, my that's just how I feel. If one of the two guys failed the polygraph, why are you letting these guys back in the tournaments? And why didn't someone protest that to start off? Especially if they lost $100,000 to start off with. Why did we let these guys back in? Really, why did we let them back in? They got to be held accountable for what they did. So is one year and $2,500 enough? I don't think so, but I want to hear in your comments. I want to hear below in the comments. Tell me what you think. So if you like this kind of content and my narrative or my opinion, leave me a comment below and say, yes, yeah, Steve, I want to see more of this stuff. Not about walleye cheating, about everything in general in fishing. And I'll try to do more videos. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. See y'all soon. Sorry to beat a dead horse. Cheers.